Welcome back. Today what I'm going to do is analyze a couple of games that I've played against some of you, my subscribers. In this case, if I looked at the archive correctly, I lost all the games that I'm going to look at, and I'm going to try to learn from them. Hopefully you can learn something too. If you're new to my channel, I'm not a titled player or a chess coach. I'm just a random person trying to get better at chess. If you would like to play against me, either on LeeChess.org or Chess.com, send me a challenge for an unrated daily game. You can choose the number of days, and I'll accept it. And I usually analyze them afterwards, sometimes on camera. Sometimes they're more interesting than others. Sometimes I have a harder time learning from them than others. But either way, let's see what we can figure out. I had the game review running in the background. It looks like the screen is cropped correctly. This one was against longtime subscriber and someone that I've played against now almost 20 times, Vedant Baj. I have lost the last few but the last couple that I lost, it was because I resigned early and I shouldn't have. This one, I determined not to resign and I played it till the end. Let's see where things went wrong. Uh, according to the graph, it does look like I had a little bit of an advantage early on, but then I gave it away. I'm going to switch to the analysis board and just go through here. There appear to have been lots of problems. Vedant Baj opened with e4 and I played the Karakhan defense and we got this version. Let's see, the move list says he played h3 at this point. That turned out to not be great. The I assume the idea is to keep my bishop from coming here. Very often the next move in the Karakhan is either pushing forward or taking, but eventually this knight comes out and then I pin it to the queen with this bishop. Uh, I assume that's all that h3 is doing is preventing me from going going there. And now I am supposed to take this pawn. Did I? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. So I'm doing all right here. Knight to c3 is one of my opponent's better moves. It immediately challenges this pawn and I, oh, wow, the engine stockfish says go ahead and play f5 here. I tend to not move the pawns around my king, especially if, if they can just come check. I guess in that case I could have blocked with g3 and had a connect four pawn chain. Yeah, I'm not going to defend that with f5 here. I did my second best move, which was defend it with knight to f6. Okay, so I'm still doing all right. My opponent played f3, which puts a second attacker on this pawn. Here, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to take it. That's an unusual move, and we're already on move 5 in a position in the Karakhan defense that I've never seen before. Uh, let's see. The engine says my best move is queen to c7. I, I don't know what that... I guess that aims for here, for a check? And it says if I played that, they would play queen to e2. Yeah, it says if I play queen to e7, they would anticipate the coming check. Play queen to e2. And then I would go ahead and check there. And then they would block with their queen and I would take it and uh, they would lose their right to castle. Okay. I played my second best move, which was to add a defender to this pawn. Their best move now is to push my bishop back with g4 or take here. Or take here with the knight. Or play queen to e2 anyway. But my opponent surprised me and the engine by playing bishop to c4, which uh, I should know this by now. I've played uh, Vedant Baj often enough that Vedant Baj very, very often likes to sacrifice a piece on this f7 square. Uh, part of the idea is to get my king out there and exposed, ruin my right to castle, ruin any plans that I have of developing pieces in castling. So I should have seen that coming as soon as they played this and uh, played e6. E6 is one of my top moves here. Instead, I played B5 and went after the bishop this way, and uh, it's not among his best moves, but he did play the thing that I should have anticipated, which was to take the F7 pawn. It is my best move to take back with the king. And now I'm up nearly minus one, and that's even if he makes his best move, which he did, which was taking there. And for some reason, it's a lot better to take back with the bishop. I don't know why. It's my third best move to take back with the knight. Why, why is it better to take back with the bishop? Because if I take with the bishop, he's going to take with the knight, and then I'm going to put my knight there, and then he was going to want to play queen to d3 to attack my knight. Oh, and then I'm going to put my queen here to defend that knight. Okay, but why is taking with the knight worse? Because it allows queen to f3, which attacks the undefended bishop. Okay, but I still have a slight advantage, and I can defend that bishop by dropping my knight back to d6, which I did. Now, it does mean that the bishop is pinned to my king, so I guess he can put another attacker on it with this g4. Is that what he played? Yes. I still have a slight edge, but only if I play e6, because I'm a piece ahead because he gave up his bishop down here on f7, and I'm about to you know, go back down this piece. And I recognize that I played g6. I don't know, again, don't know what the biggest, the big difference is between e6 and g6, but it was inaccurate for me to play g6. It is his best move to take, and he did, and it is my best move to take back with the knight. I thought that it was, and I honestly can't remember why I thought that it was better to take back with the knight. I can't remember now, but it, it's definitely better than taking back with the pawn. So that's what I did. I think maybe the reason is that I now have two pieces aimed at the d-pawn, and also I can get this bishop out and aim at the d-pawn. 
My opponent's next move was counted as inaccurate, but it is listed as the best move by Stockfish. We've run into this before. I have the game review and this analysis board running at the same depth with the same level of Stockfish, so I don't know which one to trust. But Knight, knight G to E2 was my opponent's best move here, according to one, but it was not great according to the other one. I wonder what, what the game review thought they should have played instead. I have no idea. Bishop to g7 was my best move, okay. And now I have three pieces aimed at this pawn. The reason that was a good move is because it added a defender to that pawn, I guess. And also, I, I can't take with the knight because the knight is currently pinned. My opponent's best move is bishop to g5. They played that. Now we're almost dead even. If I'll play knight to d7, which is here... I don't know what knight to d7 does. Maybe it aims to go in here and unpin the front knight? I played my second best move, which has the same exact evaluation. At, whoops, it just changed. Now, I okay, so I played my best move. Here's another case. Uh, almost two in a row here where I played my best move, but it counted as inaccurate by the game review to put the rook here because I was trying to castle by hand and then that would unpin the front knight and put their queen, uh, you know, at the receiving end of my rook. That was my best move. My opponent's best move is to castle long. That's what they played. Looks like queen to g8 or queen to a5. Uh, queen to a5 does nothing that I can tell. It, oh, it gets out of this pin, doesn't it? Okay. That's the only thing that that does, because it's definitely not attacking this pawn, which is defended, but it gets out of this pin. Well, I wouldn't have played that. a5 is another move. Now, that one is attacking the king's side here, or the queen's side, sorry. But I did play my best move, king to g8, which was the intention of putting the rook here, and now I'm ready to move this knight and attack the queen. My opponent should play king to b1 or h4 to protect the bishop. No, it's changed. h4 is not up. h4 is dropping. h4 is gone off the list. Okay, king to b1. Knight captures, wait, oh, knight captures b5 because I can't take because uh, the rook's down here. But king to b1's definitely better. My opponent found knight captures b5, and fortunately for me, I saw this. I saw the fact that if I took, I would lose my rook, so I did not do that. Um, I did had just put my rook here a couple of turns ago, so I thought I should move this knight and attack their queen immediately, and, and I did. The, the problem with that, the problem with that is, is that they can just take my knight. And then their their knight their rook would be protected by their knight and be pointed at my queen. But wait, if they did that, then I would take their rook, but then they would go over here and check me. Oh, okay. That's the problem with that. Okay. But they didn't. They didn't do that. Instead, they saw that their queen was being attacked from two different sides and moved the queen to here. One problem with that is that it unpins this pawn. Their queen was the reason that I couldn't take back their knight earlier, so now I can take back their knight. So I did. Now they can take my knight uh, two different ways here. Looks like it's best to take with the knight, which is what they did. Now I have a very, very slight advantage, but basically we're even here. But I have to take this or put my queen on d5. Why would I put my queen on d5 where it's not defended by anything? And why would I take... Okay, I, okay. I think if I, I get that if I take there, I'm going up the piece... And they're going to take back, and I'm going to take back, and then they're going to go back up that piece, and then I'll still be a pawn ahead. Okay, so I guess I get that. I do not get the second best move. I thought I needed to get out of that pin, which is why I played queen to d7, which would still defend this pawn. The problem with... Sorry, I thought I played... Uh, sorry, I meant queen to c7. I thought I played queen to c7. That would have been bad too, apparently, but I played here. Okay, well, I still was trying to get out of this pin. I thought if they did a discovery on me, I would be defended... But the problem is they can delay the discovery by playing queen to b3 check. So now when there's a discovery, it's going to be the rook back there. And my opponent is up plus three. Were they ever behind again after this? No, they were never behind again after this. Okay. I had to play king to h8. I did. My opponent's best move is knight to e6, which they played. That attacks my rook. It's defended by their queen. And most importantly, it attacks my queen. My best move here is to just go back here and trade off... Uh, to go down the exchange. I did not realize that, but I figured I was probably doing very poorly here, so I took, thinking that when they took back, I would get my rook out of danger. It's not actually one of my best moves, but I did. I got my rook out of danger. So now I'm down three points of material. It is my opponent's best move to trade off for that bishop, and oh, I wasn't supposed to take back. Wait, they already have a mating sequence? Sorry, backing up to that blunder. So it was this blunder that lost me the game. We, but again, I thought I played queen to c7. How bad would that have been? That would have been just as bad because they still would have, oh, well, they could have attacked here and then they would have forked my two pieces. Or so maybe that's why I didn't play queen to c7, but queen to d7 was just as bad. 
Okay, so that's the move that lost me the game because it allowed this, again, the delayed discovery, which defends the knight's next move here on e6 and discovery against my queen. So, and they found it. So good job to my opponent for finding that. I didn't know what to do afterwards, but I knew I was down pretty, pretty bad. And here, if you let the engine run long enough, they do have a checkmating sequence. I was not supposed to take back the knight. I was supposed to get out this knight, but uh, I didn't want to because I thought they would take it. I guess I could have gotten it here, but it says they still would have had a mating sequence. Uh, my third best move is work to f8, in which case they would have uh, gone again. Oh yeah, it was wrong for me to take here. Uh, they picked up that pawn, which wasn't even their best move, but it doesn't really matter. I, I don't know why that's inaccurate. What should I have done? I should have played knight to c6 again. Well, this is the problem I saw with knight to c6. I thought if I played that, they would play queen to c3 check, which it says that they would. And when I got out, then they would win my knight too. So that's why I didn't play that. But anyway, uh, also that pawn was hanging. So that's another reason I played what I did, but it didn't matter. They did play queen to c3 check, which was their best move. That was my best move. My opponent just moved up one. It wasn't among their best moves, but I see the wisdom in it. It cuts off uh, these squares from my king. Again, I'm supposed to just give up my knight, and they're not going to take it. Um, but instead, I pushed a pawn. And this is how the game finished out. I, my king now cannot move. My best move is g5. I did not find g5. I played knight to a6. Well, why? Because I had not moved my knight yet in the game or this rook, and I wanted to move them, so I got my knight out. I got checked here. Now I can go back. No, I cannot because the uh, the queen is covering that square. So I only have one legal move and it is here. And queen to f3 is checkmate. I don't think I learned a lot from this other than, yeah, because this was a really nice tactic here and I had to see that. Or this, which that one I do not understand at all. I do understand this in hindsight, but I don't know if I'm ever going to see it during a game. Taking with the bishop first would have been slightly worse, but we would have been okay. If I had taken with the bishop, it says they wouldn't have taken back. They just would have moved up beside it, and then I would have gotten my, uh, my queen out of over here so it wouldn't be in danger of discovery and would still be protecting the bishop, but I, I think they still would have taken it, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would have taken it with the rook. Okay. Well, I will say, good game, Vedant Baj. Thank you once again for this game, and uh, I apologize that I don't, I don't think I learned anything from this. I, again, I do understand that now, but I don't know that I'm going to see that in a game. I thought I made the best move here, and and I I think if you keep playing like this, you're you're going to go far. Uh, so you know, keep it up. Let me take a look at the next one. Okay, this is the next one against Zaz23. This one, the game review says, my opponent did not have any inaccuracies, mistakes, misses, or blunders, and I just had one mistake. Well, uh, I will also apologize to you, Zaz23. I tend to not ever learn anything from games where my opponent makes no mistakes, so I'm not even going to go through this one. I have yet to ever beat anybody who does not make any mistakes in the game, and I have yet to have learned anything from any of those games. Zaz did send me a message in chat, if I remember correctly. Let me check that. Okay, I did read the chat message, and once again, I apologize. It was not helpful to me. I didn't understand it. I'm not at that level yet, but I do thank you for the game. Hopefully, you're doing very well in chess, and it looks like you are from your ratings. I'm going to check another game. This one is not a subscriber game. I also lost this one, but this one, my opponent did make some mistakes, and I didn't capitalize on them, so I'm just going to go to those points. Uh, for as much time as I've spent here, I would like to learn something. Oh, it was here that my opponent made him. This was a mistake. Okay, so we're close to even here. I had to play g6, I guess, to push out the knight. It says they would not have pushed out the knight. They would have played queen to g4 to pin that pawn. Then I would have moved out of the pin, and then they would have left that knight there. What? I had to see that they would leave that knight there. Okay, so if I played this... Oh, they have multiple moves here. Knight to e7 check. Um, well, there's that. Knight to e7 check would have forced me to move my king over, okay, but, uh, or queen to g4, okay, and then I would have, nope, now it doesn't think I should have moved my king over. Rook a to e8, it says I should have put a rook this way. I think it's be it's because this d pawn is already so far advanced and they can get a knight outpost on my 7th rank, but I, I don't see how putting a rook there is going to help with that. No, now it's saying put rook a to d8, and they're still going to check me here. Or king to h8. Okay, what if I played king to h8? Are they still going to put the knight in there? Yeah, there's, if I remember right, my opponent ended up getting their knight in there anyway. And rook a to d8 is my best move now. Yeah, see, earlier it said, I don't remember what it said, to be honest. When when I was up here, what was, it? okay, sorry, what was their miss? What should they have played? They should have played queen to h5 now. No, yes. 
Queen to h5 or e5 is what they should have played. Okay, so so my opponent has a similar problem to me in not understanding pawn breaks. Um, I don't know that I would have pushed this pawn here, but but yeah, I often don't know which pawn is the best to push. Okay, yeah, I don't understand why that's a miss. It actually looks like a good plan on my opponent's part and attempts to plant the knight down here, and I don't have any pieces in places that can get rid of it. And I had to play g6 here knowing that they could then check me, and I would have to move my king in the corner and that they would then play queen to g4, and I, for unknown reasons, would put this bishop here. I mean, this rook here on d8. I, it's not completely unknown. I understand that it's getting in the way of this pawn. Um, at least I think that's why I want a rook on d8. But yeah, that, oh, wow. Okay, uh, if any of you understand any of the problems that I had in these games, uh, please feel free to let me know. My opponent in this game also made some other further mistakes and blunders, but I don't think I was ever ahead in this game either. Um, they were at plus three here, but then they made a miss, which takes it down to plus one. They're still ahead significantly. I played it in accuracy. They're supposed to play e5 here, but instead they put a rook behind the e-pawn, thinking that the, it needed help. I thought I needed to get that knight out of there, so I brought this bishop down here trying to get this knight out of here. Instead, they did play the e-pawn finally, but now it's a mistake. Okay, so here we're, we're as close to even as we were in the other place, but okay, I should have taken the knight. I do understand this one, but if any of you understand any of the things in that first game or this one can help me out, please do. I was having a pretty good chess day until I sat down to try to learn something from these games. This, this one I, I think I understand here. That's the reason I brought the bishop down. I should have taken. I think they would have taken back. I would have taken back with the pawn, I mean with the queen. It says they would have then moved this queen over here, I guess, to put an extra attacker on my F pawn. Uh, but but I got checkmated on move 39. Good job to my opponent for finding this, um, their queen cutting off this. Whether you can help me or not, if you made it this far, I do appreciate you spending your time here. And I'll see you next time.